Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, that is Unchauskas. Today's the uh, 30th of uh, April. Uh, yep, 30th of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's um, afternoon uh, recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, review the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but as always, before we do that, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top guys. So like I said, it will take you to this page which we uh, also update on a daily basis. So. Uh, now then, quick update on the figure, uh, what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. Um, so, yep, it was around 3,194,000. Uh, now, let's have a look how much it increased by. So, yep, not a full 20,000. So, okay, so still kind of managing in, in there. Um, U.S., of course, continues to rise. Uh, U.S. figure continues to rise, but... up. Uh, oh, it has changed quickly. Okay, so yeah, not if uh, it's around yep twelve uh, or actually around fifteen uh, thousand that the increase has happened by. Um, so yeah, the U.S. continues to lead the way in terms of infections and total amount of deaths. It has more, uh, twice as more as Italy. So if I click on the U.S., you will see that yep. I mean, well, it's. Um, probably two and a half times already more than Italy's total death toll. So I hope you guys are all staying safe. Now then, a quick jump into the charts here. Now, uh, basically, I just wanted to quickly update you on some of these, some new ones that are here, uh, but some some of these, uh, the ones that I talked about this morning. And uh, basically what I was talking about here was that, um, in a way, the FTSE 100 had an opportunity to drift higher, and it did drift higher in the morning, uh, created a new high for this month, um, and then kind of, uh, which was near the 6,150, let's round it up towards the 52 zone, and then kind of started drifting back down. Now, I talked about a potential uh, maybe correction, seeing a bit of a correction. Um, however, uh, again, the same idea applies here as yesterday. If we, we see this one dropping lower, but the price remains above this barrier here, the uh, 5,895 territory, then yes, we will stay somewhat positive. Uh, of course, for now, the main question here is can this uh, drift below that psychological 6,000 territory if the 6,000 territory can provide provide decent support. Now, of course, this will be very, very interesting to see um, and will be very interesting to see how this day is going to end because this is, of course, as you understand, the last trading day for, uh, for April. And uh, tomorrow, uh, the indices are closed. Uh, some markets are closed. Um, the majority Majority of them, of course, are going to be closed. Um, let me just quickly uh, double check everything here. So uh, yes, and uh, well, I mean, there will be quite uh, U.S. I believe will be open. Uh, so, uh, okay, so I think the U.S. is open, so okay. Um, now, the, the European markets, of course, will be uh, closed due to a Labor Day. Um, jumping into G German DAX here, uh, also had a nice push higher, created a new high for uh, for this uh, for this month, which reached the area around the 11,235 zone, and then kind of started drifting back down again. So, however, uh, we will still continue monitoring this level here, the 10,800. 
820 zone, which we previously looked at as a good area of resistance. Now it could, we'll see if it actually plays the, a good role of support. If it does, then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher. For now, we're only targeting we're only targeting the 100 EMA or the 200 EMA here on the daily chart. After that, we'll take it from there. For now. Yes, this move lower could still continue, um, but overall we are still more positive, um, especially if the um, if the price continues to balance above this 10,820 zone. Um, even if it drops below this, still there is a chance for the bulls to step in somewhere around the 21-day EMA here. But if that fails to withhold, then yep, uh, deeper extensions to the downside could be possible. Uh, the S&P 500. Now this one I talked about. Uh, recently or mainly last week I talked about this one and what I was saying that uh, in a way for us to aim for higher levels uh, we, we, we needed to see a break of this 2880 zone which we got fantastic um, and then what I was saying as well that we will only target the 100 EMA or the 200 EMA initially because uh, this is where the, the holdup might occur and uh, looking at the cash index right now uh, we can see that these the index is sliding back down a little bit so um, it's currently balancing at around 2926 territory so basically it's back uh, it's 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 in between these two EMAs the 100 EMA and the 200 EMA so again again uh, as long as it stays above this ups uh, this key area of uh, support which previously was seen as a as a resistance this 2880 zone if it stays above it then yep we could see maybe another up, up move however if it starts breaking here uh, all eyes are on the 21 day EMA uh, we'll see if it actually provides decent support if it cannot then well I mean we could see this one drifting to the uh, to the downside especially if it falls below the 2729 zone so we'll keep an eye on that one uh, but again we'll, we might consider start considering lower levels if we get a drop below the 21 day EMA here um, on the daily chart of course and uh, then uh, for just for that extra confirmation of further declines we would need to see a drop below the 2729 zone so again for now keep your eyes on this one um, and uh, yep, for, but for now, it, from the very short-term perspective, all eyes are on this 2,880 zone. Uh, we'll see if it can continue providing support. Um, Brent Oil. Brent Oil is having a fantastic uh, move higher today, so good news for the bulls, of course. However, this is what I talked about yesterday, guys. Uh, what I was saying that if we get a push above this 23.30 zone, then 23.20 uh, zone, then yes, we will aim for some higher levels. However, we'll be very careful and cautious near the 21-day EMA and this barrier, the 27.18 level, which is which marks the is marked near the lows of April 15th and 16th. Um, so. So, um, again, for now, we will, again, like I said, monitor this carefully because this is a very important area of resistance. But if this gets broken, then, well, I mean, higher levels could be met, guys. We could maybe drift back down here. Oh, sorry, back down, back up here towards these levels that we saw here in the beginning of April. So let's let's hope so. Uh, for now, like I said, everything is kind of uh, leaning more towards the upside. However, we need that confirmation break above this territory here, the 21-day EMA and the 27.18 level. Um, in terms of the downside, now uh, here uh, again, because there is, it's a bit of a mix, uh, mess here. Uh, still, we will stick to the to, to the lowest point of of March, uh, which is around the 21.64 zone. And if we see the price falling back below this territory, then yes, we will uh, we will consider some deeper extensions to the downside however for now we're uh, we can see that the the price is still hanging in it hanging in there and the bulls are still kind of uh, trying to lift this one further north so let's see if they can manage to do that uh, silver so uh, silver I talked about silver uh, yesterday and basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this little pattern here the the triangle this little symmetrical triangle we got broken to the upside however what I was also saying that keep your eyes on this barrier as well uh, this um, 
this one right here, the 15.44 zone, because if that gets broken, then, and if we see a nice daily close above this, then yes, higher levels could be met. But as you can see, it did push higher, it failed to remain above this territory, um, and now it's drifting heavily to the downside. So, and it's also he drifting heavily and breaking this uh, short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 1st of April. Now, that said, it doesn't mean that this is going to start drifting all the way down here. For that, we need to see a confirmation drop below the 1450 zone. I've mentioned this before. That's the uh, near the low of the 21st of April. And then we could consider deeper extensions to the downside. So for now, guys, uh, wait for this one out. Uh, let's get, get rid of these uh, lines because these are going to be just slightly in the way. And now what we're going to do here is mainly focus on uh, this uh, area of, uh, well, actually this little range here. So um, we want we want to see a clear uh, daily close either above the upper side of this little range or uh, through the lower side of this uh, of this little range here near the 14.50 level. We, and uh, yep, and then after that, uh, we could take it from there. Um, for now, it's stuck here. It's just moving sideways a little bit overall. Uh, then, uh, well, we'll wait. We'll wait this one out. Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is uh, retracing nicely to the downside. Uh, this is what I talked about this morning. So this morning we were hanging around here near this key important level near the 9,335 zone. Um, and as you can see now, the uh, the the crypto is drifting back down, correcting, having a nice healthy correction. Let's see how far this can go. I mean, can it correct uh, further down? What what I said this morning was that um, in a way it could drift a little bit lower here, maybe test uh, the areas around the 8,400 or even the 8,187 zones, and then kind of if it finds good support around here somewhere, then yep, we could see a nice reversal and a push back to the upside. Um, however, uh, in in if in case this decides not to travel lower, uh, for us to get comfortable with higher levels again, we would need to see a nice good break and ideally a daily close above the 9,335 zone and then we could consider higher levels. Now just to remind you what that level was, this 9,335, if we look at the monthly chart, you can see that this is the uh, the cl the uh, the closing and uh, the closing price of January and the in the opening price of uh, yep of February. Um, so yep, this is quite an interesting area. As you can see that the the, the pair today kind of found good resistance around that that level. So and now we're seeing a bit of a correction to the downside. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, again. Uh, we will get comfortable with higher levels only if we get a push above this 9,335 zone. But for now, we are kind of leaning a little bit to, to, uh, towards seeing some more correction maybe here to the downside, maybe towards even towards this 200 EMA here on the daily chart. But again, be very careful with that. Uh, AUD USD. So this pair is drifting to the downside a little bit. So it had a good run uh, this week. It broke this downside line taken from the high of the 1st of January. It also broke this barrier of the 0 0.64 445 zone and also climbed above the 100 EMA on the daily chart. So everything's kind of uh, looking quite nice and positive here. However, uh, we would like to see a push Mm, above, uh, or actually, uh, we would like to see uh, this rate staying above this barrier, above the 0 0.6445, because if so, then we could see a nice rebound and a push uh, to the upside here, maybe even uh, towards this 200 EMA or this 0 0.6677 level. Um, I've mentioned this level previously, that's the, uh, mark, is marked near the lowest point of August, near the lowest point of September, October, and is near the highest point of March. So, but uh, again, given the fact that uh, the pair is correcting a little bit lower today, so let's keep an eye on the 100 EMA and the, like I said, the last resort could be the uh, 0 0.6445 zone, which is the high of the 15th of, uh, sorry, 14th of April. Uh, if this pair falls back below this downside line and gets stuck in this little territory, this is going to be our little neutral area. In order to get comfortable with lower levels, we would like to see a drop below the 0 0.62 uh, uh, 53 territory somewhere around here and then we could aim for lower levels. Uh, USD JPY. So this one is still trading below the 
this 106.92 zone this morning it did try to push higher again but as you can see uh, the pair kind of the pair remains below this area so most likely unless something happens today most likely it will end the the um, it will end the month below this area and in a way this could lead to some uh, lower levels going into next month and uh, we'll see how it of course how it performs but if it does slide further uh, then the next target for us is around and uh, is near the 105.92 zone which is the high the inside swing high of 10th of March and uh, uh, it could also drift a little bit further down towards the 105.12 which is the low of the mm, uh, 16th of March again uh, all this of course if the rate continues to balance below the 106 0.92 territory. If it climbs back uh, above this zone, then, well, I mean, yes, we could consider higher levels. However, to get a little bit more comfortable with that, we need to see a, zero, uh, a push above the zero point, uh, sorry, 108.08 uh, level, and only then we could maybe start considering higher levels. But it's still, we will only target this level, the 109.38, which is the high of the 6th of April, or in other words, the current highest... Or, well, actually, not the current, but already probably the current, the, the already the the highest point of April with uh, at 109.32. But as I said, we need to see a push above this barrier here, the 108.08 level first. Uh, USD CAD, quick update here. Uh, I talked about this one this morning, and this is what I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this uh, this support zone, which is the lowest point of April, uh, near the 1.38. Uh, 1.3856 zone and as you can see the pair kind of for now the pair is struggling to uh, to push below it of course don't get me wrong we still have the full US session to go through we may see this one drifting back down again uh, however uh, looking at this daily chart, we would like to see first, we would like to see a daily close below this area, and then we could consider deeper extensions to the downside for now. Um, this is exactly what I didn't want to happen, and uh, this is where I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on the uh, this potential kind of range here that could be building up here. So if we see a hold up here, then th th there is a chance for the pair to drift back up. Uh, we could maybe consider a possible test of the upper side, here of the upper side of the range and then yep we'll we would take it from there but we would consider a move higher within this range only um, if we see a break um, above this a little short-term tentative downside line taken from the high of the 22nd of April and then yes we will aim for higher levels um, now then, jumping into GBP Euro, I talked about this one this morning as well, and uh, what I was saying that uh, keep your eyes on this 1.1515 level, which, as you can see, continues to provide decent resistance. Um, this morning uh, we were still hanging around somewhere around these uh, these EMAs here, the 100 and the 200 EMAs, which currently coincide. Uh, but in order to get comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a push above the 1.1515 level, which is the high of the 17th of April. Uh, if we do get a nice good push above this, then yes, this would confirm a fourth coming a higher high. More buyers could be joining in, and then, yep, uh, we could see higher levels being met. However, uh, again, let's not forget that for now, uh, all this kind of, if, if the uh, if the price continues to get held by the 1.1515 zone, uh, this this is basically uh, still could be seen as a range here. So if this continues to get held here by this 1.1515 level, we could see a bit of a retracement here. Um, and yep, this this would just confirm that the, uh, the the pair is not ready yet to pop out from this uh, uh, from this range. So for now, that's why, guys, yes, we did have an attempt today to break this 1.1515 level, but it failed to do so. However, of course, the day is not finished yet. Let's see if it can do so. Um, but if it cannot, then, well, we will be, for now, we'll remain neutral as long as the pair stays in this little range. If it gets a break here, then, yes, we will aim for higher levels. Um, Euro Aussie quick update on this one. This is what I talked about this morning, guys. We were drifting lower initially, but uh, what I was saying that in a way, keep your eyes on some of these levels. Now, um, again, you can see that the pair found good support somewhere around here. And let me just quickly mark this one on the chart. So it found support near the, today, it found support near the 1.6540 zone. And uh, yep, then started reversing to the upside. Now it's uh, back above the 
uh, the 200 EMA. Now the big question here is can this push further north? Again, um, I talked about this one and I was saying that uh, in a way to get comfortable with higher levels we would like to see a push up, uh, through this downside line and ideally a push above the 1.7005 territory which is the low of the 14th of April. This way the uh, the pair would be placed back above the 100 EMA here and maybe more buyers could see this is a good opportunity to step in. But again, for I do understand that we're missing out on a bit of a move here, however uh, we rather be safe than sorry, and uh, yep, uh, wait for uh, we can wait for that confirmation break uh, because here, don't get me wrong, it might uh, it it's showing good activity right now. However, the day might finish in a different scenario. It could drift back below the 200 EMA, and if it stays below the 200 EMA, maybe the pair is not ready yet to to climb higher. So. Uh, basically what it could do is just collect a lot of buyers here and then and then tomorrow for example reverse back down and uh, take out all those buyers and uh, well I mean continue with its journey lower so basically in other words as long as it remains below this downside line still the trend is to the downside um, so again the trend is our friend uh, try not to go against the trend however if we get a break of this downside line then may, well this is where we can could consider uh, higher areas again. And finally, Euro USD. So this one keeps struggling with the upside, although it's trading above this downside line. Uh, still, it it cannot find the, uh, the necessary kind of uh, bullish activity. Um, and uh, well, most likely uh, the um, we did well. Not most likely, but uh, basically, let me just jump into a four-hour chart because we did get some news from the ECB. However, uh, it didn't quite move the market. So um, yeah, for now, uh, we didn't quite move the euro dollar here. Just a few fluctuations, but that's within the norm. Um, but as I said previously, we need to see a nice good push above this 200, uh, 200 EMA on the four hour chart before uh, considering higher levels. For now, uh, be very careful. Yes, we are above this downside line, so it increases the chances uh, of a potential move higher. However, we need for just for that extra confirmation, we need to see a push above this 200 EMA. And ideally, we would like to see the pair staying above this 200 EMA on the four hour chart. And then we could uh, aim for these slightly higher levels. But again, for now, let's say, uh, let's keep an eye on this one. In terms of the downside, again, probably I'll, I'll repeat myself again. Uh, in order to aim for lower levels, we need to see a nice good uh, firm close, a daily close below the 1.0777 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. So guys, I really hope you found it useful and uh, just let you know that tomorrow uh, we will have the Traders Espresso, Traders Tea Time, so we'll, we'll see how the market is performing tomorrow. Um, probably could be a little bit of an, on a quiet side however yes let's see let's see if, if we do get any surprises so um thank you very much for watching and listening guys i really appreciate your time and uh, if you want to catch my video tomorrow as always uh around just maybe a little bit after six o'clock gmt time my morning espresso and then we'll yeah we'll take it from there guys thank you very much and bye bye